Good morning and welcome to our service of worship here in the Six. My name is Simeon and I'm one of the curates here in the Six. So in our recent listening process in the Benefice, we identified a number of key priorities and one of those was that of prayer. And so, in response to this, in this period between Epiphany and Lent, we want to really focus on that topic of prayer and to, to be led to pray for our church communities and the communities in which we live and work. So, we're going to spend this time dwelling on that. What does that mean to pray? What ways can we pray? And this is, is going to be looking at the acronym P-R-A-Y, which we'll unpack later. But um, there are many ways to pray. And so what we really want is for everyone to become more confident in lifting prayers and petitions to God, in finding new ways of praying in our daily lives, and to share those with those around us. So as part of that, if you want to share the ways that you have found to pray, the, the things that energise you, the things that, that you do that help you pray, we would love to hear about that and, and if, if possible to, to share that wider. So please do get in contact with us and we, we will we'll share that. Thank you. This week, as, as I say, we're, we're focusing on the P of prayer, which um, is pause. And so as we come before God with all the things that are going on in our lives, in the communities, in the world, the, the blessings and also the trials, we need to hear again those words from God in Psalm 46. Be still and know that I am God. So as we, we come to worship God today, let us be in the presence of God, be still, and know him to be our God, our Heavenly Father, Almighty. Amen. So let's sing together in worship to God. Thank you. 
And so as we come now to our time of confession, let's just take a moment of pause to reflect with God on our week. God shows us his love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, Bind up our wounds and revive us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so, may the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself and cleanse you from all your sins, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Lord of the heavenly hosts, our salvation and our strength. Without you, we are lost. Guard us from all that harms or hurts and raise us when we fall. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 to 42. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Please pray with me. Lord, that you would draw close to us as we draw close to you. And that as we do, you would whisper your words of peace, of rest, of love to our hearts this morning. In your name. Amen. And so, as I said earlier, we are looking at how to pray. And prayer really is the cornerstone of our faith. It is that foundation that we build upon. Because Christianity is not about a set of rules to follow or things to do or things to believe. It is about a relationship. And prayer is how we deepen that. As the wise old fridge magnet says, love is spelt T-I-M-E. It's about spending time with God. And as we had in our reading, Mary has chosen the best thing, to sit at the feet of Jesus and listen to him. We will be looking over the next four weeks at this model from Pete Gregg's prayer course. And what I want to say right at the start is that prayer is not a formulaic thing. It's not follow step one, two, three, and it will all be okay. Prayer is about finding what works for you. And what I have found for myself is that things come in times and seasons. And what feeds me now, what, what works for me now, doesn't, is very different from worked, what worked for me two, three, five years ago. And so it's about finding those things that help you to talk to God. But models, I think, are really useful because they give us different strings to our bow, different tools to our toolkit. So when we're finding what used to work for us doesn't work so much now, we have these tools that we can take out and, and have a go with. 
P. Gregg um, describes this, um, this model as rather than steps on a ladder, they're more like dance steps, flexible, changeable, and there to help you. So the model is to pray, P-R-A-Y, pause, rejoice, ask, and yield. And today we're taking the first of those letters. Pause. It's about reorientating ourselves to God. God is always with us, but when we pause, it's like becoming aware again of his presence. I heard recently about a group of people who were fed up with the frantic pace of life. They felt wrung out, exhausted. They were finding that they were bombarded with things that were just distracting from that relationship with God, distracting from going deeper with him. And so what they decided to do was to withdraw from society, to go into the desert where they would be free of those distractions, where they would be able to centre themselves on God. I wonder how familiar does that sound? Wrung out, distracted, exhausted, bombarding with things that pull us away from God. Well, those people I heard about, they were actually living in the third century AD. They were the desert fathers. There were no cars in those days, no TV, no internet. News had to travel at walking pace because that's how news spread for on foot from one place to another. Modern life compared with this that they found so overwhelming is working at a, a level ten times greater than that. One frantic dash from one thing to another, filling our days, leaving no moments uh, of pause, of margin, going from one thing to another to another until we finally collapse into bed, exhausted, and wake up the following day and do it all over again. Instant communication, I think, is something that really adds to that. These smartphones, they are wonderful and they're great, but they're always with us. We are always available, contactable. Technology has invaded every part of our lives and it takes that time. I've heard uh, more than one person say who's recently retired. I don't know how I ever had time to fit in work with all the other commitments that I've got. I'm just so busy after retirement. This busyness, this, this frantic pace of life is exhausting and our souls scream out for rest. They want peace. It's like a screaming baby. It just sets us on edge. The body tenses and we can't rest. Or maybe a better analogy is that of a background noise so ever present that we cease to hear it. And so that's why we come to P for pause. An illustration would be that of a car and the engine, that as we drive along, there are some noises that we just know something is wrong and we need to, to get our engine checked out. Clatter, 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 clonk, clonk, clonk. We know something's wrong. But it's only when that car is taken off the road and into the quiet of the garage where there's no other background noise, when a trained mechanic listens to that engine run, that they able to pick out notes that are not quite right, able to say, no, that needs tuning slightly, that needs tweaking, that needs changing. It's not the big things, it's those, those small changes. And when we come into the presence of God, we pause with him. We orientate to see and receive from him that we get 
those words from God, that nudge to just tune up slightly there, those warning signs that something is just slightly wrong. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble, and you will find rest for your very souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So how do we do this? Well, there are almost as many ways of doing it as people, but a few that I found. One is just simply to light a candle, to sit with that lit candle and to acknowledge the presence of God with us. Another is to walk in nature. Scientists have, have looked at that and they found a real healing in being in nature, being in God's creation. They found that just 10 minutes will actually start to lower your blood pressure and that your cortisol levels, that stress hormone that goes around your body, starts to decrease. In fact, they've found that patients in hospital that are able to get outside to find some green space, even if that's just a tree in a courtyard or just some small area of, of creation, they found that they actually heal faster. Another method is to focus on your breathing. Breathing in, holding and breathing out. Some people like to have a phrase that they repeat and repeat to just Focus in on God. For the Franciscans, their phrase is, My God and my all. My God and my all. My God and my all. Another that I've heard and really like is, Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you. Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you. And all of these things, they help us to, to focus, to centre, to orientate upon God. But if you're anything like me, then the second we get into that, that that's peaceful, reflective mode that we're hit by distractions, in Martha, um, in our gospel reading there, um, I love the way the, the uh, English Standard Version puts it, that uh, she was distracted by serving. And I imagine that she was there with all lots to do on her mind, lists and jobs and things that we have to do. But no, it's about putting that down, about sitting at Jesus' feet. And so what do we do when we get into that frame of mind and then something something crosses our mind? Have I left the oven on? Oh no, I've got this thing or that thing. I need to do that. I wonder what's for dinner. Well, we can turn them into prayers. God, I, I thank you that um, I live in a, a, a culture where I can just have dinner. I thank you for your provision of food. Uh, I give that thing that has just occurred to me to you. Jesus, I give everyone and everything to you. That worry of the oven, I give to you. You give them to God and then you let them go. Pete Gregg uses the image of a boat on a lake and the lake is still and serene until a speedboat comes zooming past and your boat is rocked by those bow waves. But if you pause, you, you ride them out, you, you um, hold on to that, 
and they will settle and settle quickly and you get back to that still lake and so why why do this why pause well as i said it's about drawing closer to god it's like in our isaiah reading isaiah 40 31 those that wait or other versions say hope and trust on the lord shall renew their strength they will mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is God's promise to us that if we seek him, he will be there with rest, peace and companionship. And it's from this place of intimacy with God, of resting in his presence, that we come to do the rest of those letters, pause and then rejoice, ask and yield. But we will come on to those in the following three weeks. Amen. <laughs>
today we're going to continue our theme of pause as we focus on some key words and bring the prayers that are on our hearts before God. When we bring all our prayers together with the words that our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, 
on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So let us affirm our faith in God revealed by Jesus by saying together, we believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
also may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you know, love and pray for today and always. Amen. So let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.